Hi guys, this is Gina McKinnon and I'm here recording my first assignment for Coursera and the Berkeley College of Music. This is my kitten Pickles who I am holding so she won't play with my camera cord. And I am here to talk to you today about setting up a home recording studio. I have to tell you I'm a complete noob on this one and uh, that's why I started taking the sound and music production class through Coursera and I'm hoping to share a little bit about what I've learned so hopefully um, I can help you if you're a new beginner. So let's get started. I want to tell you a little bit about who I am. I am a singer-songwriter. I also play piano. That's my rolling keyboard there. Her name is Bertha. And when I pan over to the right here, I'm going to show you where I'm going to plan on having my home studio set up with a desk and an audio interface and monitor speakers and all that. But I don't have that right now. Yeah. But I've been giving lots of thought to what I want and let me show you what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to start right here at my keyboard and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So one thing that you'll see on the back of my keyboard is that I've actually got a MIDI port right here. So I can connect a USB cable right into my computer so that I can work directly on my digital audio workstation or DAW. But that's not what I'm going to do because I'm also a singer so I need to be able to connect a vocal microphone as well. So what I'm going to do is take my line out and I'll show you exactly where I'm going to put it in the audio interface. Okay, so let's take a quick peek at what the audio interface looks like. This is the one that I think I'm going to get because it's the one that I think is probably best going to meet my needs as a keyboardist vocalist. So this is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 and the top part is the front of the audio interface. The bottom image is the back of the audio interface and let's just go over these things. So the first thing that you'll notice is that the channels are dual input so it can take a TS cable with a regular knob and a, a little head and a sleeve and it just plugs right in and because this is an unbalanced cable you want to make sure that you can get the shortest cable to minimize um, the noise that can come from the cables or you can plug a three-pronged XLR cable right into it like this and the XLR is a balanced cable and it can be used for vocal mics it can also be used uh, with a TS cable going into something called a direct box and then on the back of the direct box you plug your XLR cable directly into it and the advantage of using a direct box is then you can use a really long line, a balanced cable line, um, to go to whatever length you need. And that will reduce the noise interference that comes along with using a TS cable. All right, so since the keyboard, unlike guitar and bass, is already at line level, we're going to use this little knob that says line. If you have an, an electric guitar or a bass, you'll want to switch that over to the instrument. And um, because the keyboard is already line level, one thing that I've heard is that sometimes the input can already be very strong. So this particular audio interface also has a pad option, which lowers the input coming into it. Of course, when you're plugging everything in, you're going to want to turn the gain level as far down as you can. So one channel, here's the second channel. So maybe this one might be my vocal mic. Maybe this one might be for my keyboard. Here we have a phantom power. If you're using a condenser mic, right now I'm not going to purchase a condenser mic because I think a vocal mic will probably suit my needs just fine. Moving over here, we've got um, the monitor levels for the monitor speakers. 
I don't have speakers right now, so I'm probably just going to be using a headphone. And right now my headphone, here are my headphones, and it's got this tiny little eighth inch jack. So I'm going to need an adapter that looks like this. And you will see that unlike, this is a TRS cable, and unlike the TS cable that only has a single divot here, here we've got two, and this is what creates the stereo sound. All right, going out to the back, we have the MIDI in and MIDI out if I wanted to connect my keyboard directly into the MIDI ports, I can. Here's the USB port, which will allow me to directly connect the audio interface into my computer. And here we've got some RCA ins and outs that I probably won't use. These last two ports go to the monitor speakers that eventually I will have set up for my home studio. Now when we talk about connecting the audio interface into your laptop or your uh, tower, PC tower, it's going to be connected into the USB port. Some audio interfaces um, have FireWire, so if you buy an audio interface with FireWire, please make sure that your computer has a FireWire port. And then the other thing is some audio interfaces are made for Macs or PCs. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that um, when choosing an audio interface, you're buying one that supports the operating system that you currently have. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about was what happens once you've plugged everything in and where does it go? So you're gonna be using your computer to run something called a digital audio workstation. And right now, this is an image of a, a DAW digital audio workstation called Ableton Live 9. And I'm using this as part of another Coursera class that I'm taking, Intro to Ableton Live. And I've got another one that I had bought a month or so ago, but I'm not so great at it. This is called Reaper. And I decided to buy Reaper because it was 60 bucks, so for a fully functional DAW. It was a pretty good price. And the other thing was, is a lot of people recommended it if you've used a free uh, software recording, recording software called Audacity. This is a good step up because it's very similar to Audacity. But right now I've been composing with Ableton Live because as I said, I'm taking another class. And so this is my primary DAW that I'm using. Okay, so let's take a second to recap what we've learned about setting up a home recording studio and how to record your keyboard, your vocal mic, your electric bass, your guitar, you know, whatever you're doing. Uh, so first of all, what we need is an instrument and then we need to cable that instrument into an audio interface. Remember, if you are recording vocals, you'll need to either have a condenser microphone or a dynamic microphone. Once again, the one that I'm using is a Shure 58 a dynamic microphone, but a condenser microphone is supposedly the preferred option for home recording studios. So instrument, microphone, plug everything into the digital audio interface. That converts the signal into a binary language which will go right into your computer so that your digital audio workstation or DAW can process that information. And then you can manipulate the sound, add special effects, uh, cut the clips, do whatever you want. And then when it's done, it goes out through a USB back through the digital audio interface, comes out through your monitor speakers or your headphones and um, there you go you've created music using your home recording studio so i hope that this has helped once again as a beginner um, i'm glad to be able to share at least a little bit of this knowledge and i hope that what i've said makes sense to you happy recording <laughs>